This is part 10 of our Link to the Past 100% walkthrough. We got a lot going on in this part. Uh, yes. We, we're well, not a lot going on. We just, it's a very long part, but we basically spent a lot of it in Hyrule Castle. And it's actually kind of an important part of the game because we do finish up Hyrule Castle. We face Aghanim, the Dark Wizard. Uh -huh. um, and we actually get transported to the Dark World where we're going to get a heart piece, uh, the Quake Medallion. Yes. And we're going to end this okay. part eventually by uh, Okay, I guess technically <laughs> there is a lot going on yeah. then, but just like the majority <laughs> of it is Hyrule Castle. But it is. Once again, that theme right there, love, love it. it. And I just really like this dungeons or so-called dungeon yeah, right here because we call it a dungeon. it's like straight on combat like there's really no puzzles to it yep. it's basically go up this castle and just beat enemies i love that change of pace i do too it was kind of cool how they brought back like the ball and chain soldiers right off the bat uh -huh. um i kind of thought they'd be more appropriate like near the end because they were a mini boss yeah i remember when we went to get zelda yeah uh -huh. but it is cool i guess they're like the first guardians you encounter when you come into this section of the castle so it's kind of nice to see them again now one thing i did hate about this dungeon is the dark areas and you'll hear us complain too. about that we already have a little bit yep <laughs> we'll complain about it a little bit more in the next dungeon but just Ugh. especially with this room right here with this maze and everything i oh. mean I already sneaking mazes like the last <laughs> thing i want is like a dark room with a maze especially when we uh, kind of struggle to get that torch lit <laughs> yeah, well, the spacing is just not right right there and it just, really wasn't i guess agony or agony that's right agony Agonim, yeah. i guess agony doesn't care about the electricity bill or something <laughs> like in certain parts of the castle or whatever guess well now the royal family's not in control. He probably doesn't care what. That's what you said. Place. Like, why would they, why would this place not be lit up? It's a castle. I'm like, yeah. well, obviously the royal family is no longer here taking care of the place. Exactly. And Aghanim's like, you know what? I don't care about those minions down <laughs> below me. I'm just gonna worry about the top part being lit up. I do kind of like though. So I can see me. When I get my butt kicked here in a little while. Oh yeah, and he does. <laughs> and he does. But I do kind of like how like the floor and stuff and so, well not in this room now of course as soon as we come into but it has like a red strip like from room or from like door yes, to door um, just it makes it look like a, a red carpet like yeah agree you know it's a really nice touch for this I like awesome how you at that point like you said right when you get in this know. room and there's no more red carpet but you're all right I mean it does really look and feel like a castle it has yeah. some of that like you know royal feel to it but it with all these soldiers and everything Ugh. doesn't anymore so but like. I guess I'm confused on, like, I guess Aghanim, he brainwashed these soldiers. I believe I guess so. They, well, I guess they kind of been our enemy the whole <laughs> game so far, so... Well, remember, they think, uh, if you remember some of the signs earlier, like in Kakariko Village, they say that Link kidnapped the princess. So Oh, okay, so yes. I, they, they may not that even makes know. Sense. That actually makes sense, yeah. okay. So they don't even know that uh, you're a good... You're the I hero. just always wonder why the soldiers were always against us. I, I know. Look, I never really thought about that much, <laughs> you know, but like, I guess when I was thinking about it right there, I'm like, why are so many of them attacking us? But that makes perfect sense. It's like, hey, Aghanim's, uh, he, he's a... He's, He's good at manipulating people. We're on a mission to help you out, and that's why I thought maybe he brainwashed them or that yeah. some or you know, he's got all these spells. So that had something to do with it, but I totally forgot about that sign because I think yeah. I've only seen it once playing this game where like we said it's in Kakariko Village, right? Yeah. Okay. Plus we know that you don't always take time to stop and read the signs. No, I no, no, if it's text, let's move on. Let's move on. Exactly. Like text is important to the game. This is why I want voice acting yeah. so much. Well, according to my wife, I don't listen either. But <laughs> <laughs> at least I think I would do better with voice acting. Probably, probably. We'll see if we ever get that. We'll, yeah, uh, hold we, can, we get some of it in Breath of the Wild, but once again I'm hearing that Link doesn't talk, so Whatever. Uh, that's a different discussion for a different. Well, we can discuss if you want to. It's a twelve-minute video. It so really we got is. plenty of time to do it. And that's the thing. Like when we're just doing straight combat, there's there's not a lot to talk about. But I do like like the escalation of enemies. Like you get progressively yeah, uh -huh. harder bad guys as you go. And I, I got to say, and you'll vouch for this. I would have to stop and fight. Everyone. Oh, yeah. Like, you had the problem of, like, I don't know what it's called, but, like, you had to beat every enemy. I do. Like, on the screen. I I'm like, obsessive. You would really struggle with this one because you have edges. Yeah. And then a lot of those, like, soldiers, like, they'll hit, they'll knock you back. Yeah. When you try to hit them and you hit their swords. So, like, yeah, you would really struggle <laughs> on this area because those soldiers, they don't look that hard, but you got to get, like, a position right or yeah. you just keep on hitting their swords and, and keep spears. bouncing back. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But how about the music change when we get close to Aghanim? And this scene, I know you especially brought up, like, seeing, like, Zelda on this bed with Aghanim over top of her just looks really creepy. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the uh, scene in Wind Waker yes. where Gandor's kind of standing over Zelda. Yep. And then Mesh Cap, I can't remember exactly if Vati has her on a bed. It was some kind of platform. But he, yeah, he has her on some kind of platform, so it also reminded me of that. But just love this whole room right here. And just me the too. look, and that bed looks evil, too. And just it does. everything, just for, like, you know, 
a 16 bit game, just a lot yeah. of detail that really looks good. And it's just, it, it, it does, that bed would give me nightmares. Okay, first of yes, all. Uh-huh. Well, I, mean, I would not sleep in that either. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like a mouth closing in on you. Yeah, but th- this room, it does look like, like a royal. Never had no uh, eye symbol right there. Th- there's been one or two of them. Sorry for interrupting, oh, but no, I've never totally seen that. Fine. And some people I know, like, online have brought up how similar it is to, like, the Sheikah Yeah, symbol. that's what I was thinking, uh-huh. And it's, and there's always the Eye of Truth, uh, the, yeah. the weapon in the Ocarina of Time, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, so there's some, like, theories and stuff about that, but this Aghanim fight, I gotta say, I like the character Aghanim, but I thought yeah. this fight is too easy. It is too easy, like, I like that you actually had to slice the currents to get to him. I like that Although, it wasn't too. that hard to figure it out. No. <laughs> and just for some weird, not weird reason, because I like the color blue, but I really mm. like the blue outside of this boss room right here. It almost makes you feel like you're, like, on a platform up in the sky, like it's yes. a blue sky. I don't know if that's what they were going for. It feels like a different boss room than the past boss it rooms does. we had. Now, one thing I do want to say is like, on his lightning strikes, a good way to actually pick that up, and this is the walkthrough part of it. Yeah. <laughs> if he goes up to the top center and he like falls, his eyes fall you. Yeah. He's not going to do a lightning strike. But if he continues to look straight down, he is going to do a lightning strike. I really like how that lightning strike looks, though. It just it, it the way it like yeah. flashes across the screen. It just it looks really cool. It's easy to dodge if you know it's coming. Well, this whole fight is not very hard. And did it's you say really that or easy. not? I, I mentioned it. Okay, yeah. you mentioned it. Like yeah, but it's not very hard. And for a character that's this important, like. Yeah. Yeah, and like to go to the, like the next big part of the game, like I, what I call the second half. Yeah, it just need to be a little bit harder boss fight, I think. Well, I, I think about some of the other times you've struggled reflecting light orbs. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> actually a good point. Like I suck at that so bad, but on yeah. this game it was actually kind of easy, and I did appreciate Nintendo. See, I got too cocky the very yep. first Zelda game I played. I was like, oh, <laughs> these light orbs are simple, and then yep. come to find out that they're not that simple. They're really the only tough, and I don't even consider it tough. But the only tough part about this fight is knowing when he's shooting a light orb that you can reflect versus like those blue yeah, blue, uh-huh. blue dots or whatever you should are. have enough time to get out of the way and just dodge exactly. them you can also hit them with your sword but sometimes they'll kind of reflect yeah. into you so I just usually try to dodge them but uh, it's a good how about the yeah, sunlight coming through on the edge right, oh, right I like you that, that too uh-huh. I never really noticed that before you would think that like most of the dark people in Zelda games like don't like light at all yeah. so you think you get the Line same the thing yeah <laughs> exactly like well that's later on yeah. in the game but like you would think he wouldn't let light like sunlight coming in through that room right there. But how about getting drawn into the Dark World? I, I know we briefly popped into the Dark World when we were on our way to the Tower uh-huh. of Hera, but to land on top of this pyramid, you've got like the like the purple sky in the background. It just it was such a great visual. It's one of those lasting memories in Zelda. Like, it, like absolutely. You always remember like the first time, like well, some of them. Yeah. You always remember like a couple of those first times and just I remember, like, you know, first playing this Zelda, like, this is the first Zelda game I was playing, yep, yep. and then, like you said, seeing a transformation and everything, but, like, you said, the backdrop is what yes. caught my attention, and just how awesome that backdrop looks, and how, like, evil it looks, just... It really does. I mean, it makes this, like, image right here so much more, like, if it was just nothing behind there... Oh, it'd be boring. It wouldn't be that great at all. Plus, being just on, like, on top of this giant pyramid, right in the very center of the Dark World, it really hits uh-huh. home how big... And epic this game really is because you know at this point we only seen the map of you know the light world yes uh-huh. and now we come here and realize the game is twice as big oh definitely uh, as you may have first realized it was and I just think that that is just it's kind of an epic feeling moment like, like exactly you're saying like exactly yeah. how once you say because what I was gonna say is like this is like really the part in the game where it felt epic it finally yes. started yes the first part of the game was really good it's kind of going along with what you're saying but yep. then we got here and you saw that second map I guess you could yes. say and just like wow this feels epic and it's really it doesn't feel exa- like when the game started for me but when the game really started going yep. for me and I, how about this overworld theme no, here in the I mean, dark world still like still one of the best it one is. of my favorites to this day and it just gets you going too it's like it's a good like we're going to war here in the dark world well, it's just like I love the colors too like just switching too. the colors and I think they only used eight colors in this game but just I think that's what I, I heard one you. time <laughs> I, I think that's it but like um, if I'm wrong I'm wrong yeah but I think all they did was obviously switch those colors a little bit and it worked and the like shades and tints I don't really know <laughs> that far into it but just no. They made this world look so much different, even though it kind of was the same layout it as really the is. other one, although we do have different areas. Yeah, it's like most of the geography is exactly the same. I mean, there's a few ledges and stuff that you'll see uh, are a little bit different depending yeah, uh-huh. on whether you're in the light world or the dark world. And we'll actually use that to get some heart pieces and things like that when we have to like teleport to an area we couldn't reach previously. Yeah. But yeah, just like the color swap does make it feel like a, a darker, more sinister world, which, you know, it's the dark world. Yeah. It makes sense. And every time I play this game, kind of go back to my epic talk, like, <laughs> I just want to get through the light world. 
Because I yeah. want to get to this area because, yeah. like, you'll see here in a little while, we, we got quite a few dungeons. We yes, won't say we exactly do. how many we have, but just there was so much more going on in this area and just, like, all the evil feeling. Like, yeah. You truly feel like a hero entering this part. It just kind of cracks me up, like, getting the... I want to reiterate it, like, two or yeah. three more times <laughs> before this video's done. Well, I always had to laugh, like, getting that Quake medallion because I know, I think there's a sign right there, something that says, like, don't throw something into yes, the uh -huh. stone rings. So it kind of gives you a clue. That, yeah, that's exactly, yeah, exactly what, what you should do. Because when the uh, Zella tells you not to do something, it's exactly what you should yeah. do. Yeah, I just have to laugh how the guy's like, hey, you disturb my sleep if I give you this item, will you just leave <laughs> yeah, me alone? Yeah, we get out of the way. Yeah. And that's so. actually required for the game very late on it is, in yep. the game. So um, Very late. Wow. Now, actually, when we first got to the uh, Dark World, you can actually go all the way over to the uh, Palace of Darkness, the next dungeon. But yeah. while we're here kind of in this area, there are some collectibles we could get, which is what we're doing yeah. right now. Given the Quake Medallion, like you said, are, are all three medallions required? I know two of them are. Um, um, I don't think the uh, the awesome one we get, I think, is the only one that's not required. Okay. But it's the awesome one. Yeah. So <laughs> you want to get that one. I Bombos, think, I think. I think that one we uh, get right there, I don't think we use that one very I can't remember the exactly quake? off the top of my head which one it is, but I don't believe we use that one very much. Like, I, in I know, combat is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, not in combat. Like uh -huh. I believe it's the Bombos that we actually do use in combat a little bit well, yeah, but, a little bit <laughs> we use it a lot in yeah. some parts of the game okay so good point good point there's a lot of parts well you know we don't have the weapon yet so we we'll won't get talking that. about but just <laughs> it is important to get the medallion. i remember the though. first time coming into this area i was like oh well here's the dungeon right yeah. here i'm not even sure actually i think while i was practicing i went in there and like there's literally nothing like no. hardly, at all important in that building right there but i've always liked this area right here like the yeah. maze just kind of like the i don't know what that shrubbage or yeah, whatever you want to call it, it. Like a hedge maze yeah it's just a little bit different than what we saw in the light world and like this area don't really care for the next dungeon to see no. our next video really well. <laughs> well it always reminds me of the shining how like in the movie, like they have this hedge maze. I don't know if you ever saw The Shining. No, I haven't actually. I've like, seen that part though. Yeah, like the hedge maze, hedge maze. Yeah. That uh, you know Jack Nicholson eventually gets uh, you know lost in. But it's the, Sh the Shining's one of those movies I've seen like like almost every part yeah. of the movie, but I've actually never seen the movie in its like yeah. entirety. So now paying Kiki the Monkey a hundred rupees off. to we just get paid in. for the flippers. Exactly. It it's, does feel like too a much money. But now that we're gonna enter the dungeon, this will wrap up part ten of A Link to the Past 100% Walkthrough.